Hey everybody, and welcome to Master Data Analysis with Python. We are currently in part one, selecting subsets of data of volume one. And in this video, we cover an intro to pandas. Now, if you'd like to learn more, please consider purchasing the book. It's uh, 600 pages, has 300 exercises with multiple projects, and very importantly, detailed solutions. All right, so continuing with intro to pandas, we have a couple objectives for this video. We're gonna learn about the data frame and the series, and importantly, uh, go in detail about their components. We're also gonna call a couple of simple methods, the head and tail methods. All right, so the data frame and series, these are the two primary objects that pandas gives its users um, to contain the data. So we're gonna be using the data frame in series constantly throughout the course. So a data frame is a two-dimensional uh, data structure that looks just like a table. It's rectangular, it has rows and columns. A series is simply one dimension of data and you could uh, think of it as a single column of data. So that's the data frame in series. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, read in some data, which is typically one of the first things that you'll do uh, when you begin an analysis. And to do this, we're going to use the read CSV function. Now, uh, there's a lot to this function, but for uh, the purposes of this uh, tutorial, we're just going to use it just to read in data. Uh, there'll be other tutorials that go much deeper into um, what all the read CSV function can do. All right, so the first thing we typically do, uh, you know, in order to get started in a data analysis is to import pandas. We're going to alias it as PD by convention. And then we're going to use the read CSV function, which is a simple way to read in uh, text files. By default, it will read, it can only read it, by default, it will read in comma separated value text files. So you have to have a uh, properly formatted uh, text file for it to read in how you would expect it. So um, the data, there's a data folder one level above this folder, and it contains lots and lots of data, but we're just gonna choose one uh, data set, which is this bikes data set. It contains uh, public bike data from the city of Chicago. So the read CSV function takes uh, at minimum one, uh, one argument, and this is the, uh, the first one is the location in your file system as a string to where the CSV is located. So that is the simplest um, call to the read CSV function. You simply pass it a string of where the file is that you would like to read. So I'm gonna go ahead and execute this. Now, uh, I've stored the result in a variable named bikes. So if you were unaware of what read CSV returned, you might not know what bikes is. But um, uh, there is no output here, it's just an assignment statement. So uh, let's go ahead and reveal uh, the display of bikes in the notebook. And to do this in Jupyter uh, notebooks, you need to put it as the last line. So here we'll just put it in a, in a cell just by itself. So uh, this is, is in fact a data frame. And um, this is what data frames will look like within the Jupyter notebook. So you can see there's rows, and you know these appear to be the column names above here in bold. And we're gonna go into uh, much greater detail. Now, the default output of a data frame is 60 rows and at most 20 columns. So when I'm working with data frames, I typically do not like to see all this output. So it sort of clogs up my notebook and it's not necessary to um, it's not necessary to output all those rows. So I almost always use a method called head to shorten the output. And this is so I can get a you know a much um, you know uh, much less data printed onto the screen because typically I'm just interested in just taking a quick peek and then moving on to the next uh, line in my analysis. So the head method. I bring up the documentation here, it takes a single parameter, uh, n, and by default it is five, so it will return uh, the first five rows by default. 
So if I do this, I get a much shorter output. I only get five rows and uh, I still get up to 20 columns. Uh, and I'll show you how to change that later. Um, so we can change the number of uh, rows returned. And since you know my screen is zoomed in here a little bit, I can do this in order to you know shorten the output even more. So I just changed n equals to two, and now we have uh, uh, two rows. So similarly, there is a tail method which will return the last n rows. So I could say um, it doesn't have to be some, some number less than five. I could put in any number I want. So tail here will return the last eight rows. Okay, so those are uh, the head and tail methods of the data frame. I use them frequently um, to shorten the output and to inspect the data. All right, let's move on to the components of a data frame. So this is the absolute minimum you need to know about your data frame in order to proceed in Pandas. So I, this is why I bring this up at the beginning is because it's very, very crucial to understand these three components because um, uh, if you don't understand them, then you're not going to know how your data frame works. So the three components are the columns, the index, and the data. So here I have this image of a stylized data frame. And you can see the columns are green, the index is red, and the data is like this bluish purple color. So um, the columns, uh, each column name is in bold above the data. That's how you can distinguish the columns from the data. They will always be in bold. Now, what you'll hear me say frequently is that each column name, like trip ID is a column name, user type is a column name, and so forth, each column name is a label for all the values in that column. So I like, I really like to use the word label because I feel like it's very descriptive on what a column name does. So a label like user type references or labels all the values in this particular column. Just like trip duration is a label for all the values in this column. So we can see here that if you look down here, um, you know, I have a description of, of each component and then I have some alternative names. So for instance, you'll, you'll also hear column names uh, being called column labels and also column index. And we'll uh, uncover why the word index is in there a little bit later. Now let's turn our attention to the index. So this is one of the most confusing components of pandas and it's deceptively uh, simple uh, to look at, but can cause uh, quite a bit of frustration and havoc uh, later on when you learn, um, you know, more about how pandas utilizes it. So the index, even though it looks innocuous and is simply just the integers here, this is a technically a component of the data frame. So it is also going to be in bold. So just because these are integers beginning at zero and uh, going, uh, you know, just looking like they're the row number, they are actually a separate component. And each index label, just like we have column labels or column names, each index label is a reference to that entire row. So the index number zero references this entire row, just like the index number three. It's also a label here. It is representative of this entire row of data. So every row and every column has a name, just like every person has a name that we can reference. Every row and every column has a name or a label, if you will, and that references uh, each row or column. Another piece of terminology uh, before I get onto the data is this axis number. So you can think of this as like a X and Y coordinate plane, like there's axes. But uh, instead of you know X and Y, uh, pandas uses numbers zero and one. So the vertical axis is going to be considered a number zero, and the horizontal axis will be considered a one. So no need to memorize this right now. Um, this will pop up uh, again and again later on throughout the tutorials, but uh, it's just important to know that um, there is an axis number 
that is uh, that pandas uses, and actually it's it's a um, convention from NumPy. So NumPy has the same exact uh, access numbers. And then we have the actual data. So we can't forget about the, the, the actual data. So everything here in blue is the data. Um, the red and the green are the labels for the data. So if you wanna just sort of separate the two, um, you know, labels versus data, that might be uh, good to do. Um, another name for data is called values. So either one will be used to talk about um, all the stuff in, uh, in blue. Okay, so that's the components of a data frame. Now, we looked at bikes and um, yes, uh, this is a data frame, but to you know, verify that we do in fact have a data frame, formally we can use the type function. So the type function, whenever you pass it in an object, returns the you know the the type so i have this uh you know phrase here fully qualified name so a lot of people get confused when they see this they're like what is what is this a pandas.core.frame.data frame so it's a it's a very you know it's a, it's a long detailed name um but what what actually is occurring is that the 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 uh the the type of object is always the very end it's always the one that follows the very last dot so without going into too much detail, uh, what, um, what Python returns whenever you run the type function is called the fully qualified name. So fully qualified meaning it gives you the, uh, it starts you off with the package name, and then um, uh, this is actually a sub package, and then this is a, a module, and then, so a module is just a Python file. So this is a .py file. This is actually located in your file system. And in there, the class data frame is defined. So it just gives you like a, um, a file path to find out where the data frame uh, class is actually defined. But the actual name of the type, the actual name of the type is data frame. It's not pandas.core.frame.dataframe, it is simply data frame and this is just you know um, a file location essentially where it's located on your machine all right so let's move on to a series so we have this bikes data frame and um, a series is simply one column of data or a single dimension of data so it is actually a completely separate object now to select a single column from a data frame, you're going to use the brackets uh, appended directly to the data frame. So within these brackets, you're going to simply pass in the uh, name of the column as a string. So that's how you select a single column. It's very much like a dictionary um, in, in Python. So we're gonna give it the key, um, you know, which is essentially the column name, and we'll get back just that um, just that column. So it's as simple as that. So this is the first selection uh, of data that we're doing, just like that. So this has returned one single column of data as a series. So what we can do here is just assign this to some variable. So we'll just assign it to TD and then we can call some methods on here. So uh, again, the default output is 60 rows for the series, or really 60 values. And then we'll just do dot head to shorten the output. So that's, uh, that's quite nice. So head and tail work the exact same for series as they do for data frames. So series is a much simpler um, object, as you can see, it's just a single column of data. Let's go ahead and look at the, comp uh, the components formally. So here we go. Uh, so the series has two components. It has the index and the data. It does not have any columns. So it is uh, uh, analogous to the data frame, but without columns. So um, again, the index so uh, it plays the same role as the index for a data frame. It labels every uh, row. Now, we don't really use the word row for series because this is not a row of data. We just simply say it's a value. So the index really is a label for each value. 
in the series. So zero labels this value 993. This uh, index label over here, 50,084, labels this value 1625. So by default, there's 60 rows, or you know, I should really say 60 values. Um, yeah, you see these three dots, that just means th those values are not shown. So you know, by default, the first 30 and the last 30 rows um, values are shown. Now, um, so that's the index. There's also data in a series. So this is the actual data. It's important to note that the index is not technically data. Okay, so it is simply a label for the data. So you need to have that straight in your mind when working with in pandas. You know, both for both data frames and series, the index acts as a label for the data. Okay, so there's some extra metadata that um, gets outputted and you know, so this is not actually part of the series. This is simply um, some extra, you know, information that Pandas provides uh, for its users. So this is not uh, this is not part of the series. You can um, access this in alternative ways, but it's not like actually part of the series. So the series is indexed and the values, also known as data, uh, and that's it. So uh, that wraps up uh, this lesson on understanding the components of the data frame and the series. They're very, very important to um, be aware of and to understand right off the bat um, and to always be thinking of index columns and data when you're doing your analysis. Uh, it will really help straighten out you know, how you think about um, pandas and how it works. All right, so that concludes uh, this lesson. And uh, if you can have the means, um, please consider uh, purchasing the book. Um, and you know, again, it's 600 pages, 300 exercises, and multiple projects with detailed solutions.